Hey, Carolina Tony, thank you for stopping by my channel. If you're here for the first time, be sure to go down here and click subscribe. After that, ring the bell so you'll be notified every time we put a video out, which is always on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Today, we are at the Cradle of Forestry in the Pisgah National Forest. In the early part of America, people would just go into the forest and cut trees down and just let it go. George Vanderbilt knew that if that kept happening instead of the Great Smoky Mountains and the Pisco National Forest, we'd have just big humps of mud. So he hired a Dr. Schnick to develop a way to replenish the forest and to conserve our natural resources. And that's where the Cradle of Forestry got its start by bringing students from all over the place here to train them on how to be conservationists and we're gonna go take a look at this but right after this station identification I'm very lucky today there are not many people up here. In fact, I think I'm the only person up here. In 1906, a horse was a basic equipment for a forestry student here at the Biltmore School of Forestry. Dr. Sizenick, the founder of the Biltmore School of Forestry, expected his students to be on time after they arrived in the morning. The mornings would be spent in deep in textbook, and then in the afternoon they were on to the field. Of course, this has been recreated around 1965, I believe. It was originally built in 1891. And of course, all they had for heat was a little fireplace. Every day after the classroom exercises and shortly before they headed out into the woods they stop here at the commissary for maybe some hoop cheese and a can of beans or sliced peaches from a can. Commissary they had all types of tools and things that you may use. All types of food for sale. This was the ranger's house. Of course, the Bill Moore School of Forestry was started by George Vanderbilt. And he actually had this house built for his uh, ranger, George Gillespie, and his family. And they boarded up to eight students in the uh, loft of this house. This is inside Ranger Gillespie's house with a bed. And there's a little tool there to tighten the ropes in the bed so you could sleep tight. There's another bedroom. I like how the beds are not made. And look. Here's something that Jacob the Carpetbagger would truly love. A handmade quilt. Here's it would go up to where the students would sleep at. And the kitchen. Where we come to eat the meals. Cook over an open hearth fire.
And of course out behind the house, there was another little house called the Owl House. Since there were no textbooks in forestry at the time, and we're talking the late 1800s, like 1890, there were no English textbooks, the doctor spent a lot of time here at his office grading papers and translating books from other languages into the English language so he could teach forestry to these students. And this was the doctor's office where his secretary would sit typing papers and he'd be back there in the back translating the books. Now the people that lived in the Pisgah Forest for many years, they hunted and fished and moonshined and cut timber, kind of like what they wanted. Now, a lot of this land belonged to the Vanderbilts and George Vanderbilt was actually the person that decided that they needed to preserve this in some way. And I pronounced the doctor's name wrong all along. It was Dr. Schenck, is what his name was, that was hired by George Vanderbilt to run the School of Forestry and to train the new foresters to how to reprint the land. Well, there was a lot of thievery going on, so they built these lodges. And these lodges became known as the Black Forest Lodge because they uh, resembled Black Forest Lodges in Germany, you know, in their architecture. And he paid, he had 14 of these things stationed around a Pisgah Forest. And he paid these rangers $50 a month to live here and protect the forest from thieves. As we call it here in the South, Supper. Very primitive. Here are some early 20th century foresters. With the horses that were needed to uh, work in the School of Forestry and to train the students, you know, in their hands-on operations out in the woods and wagons and all. Two blacksmiths took turns for coming from neighboring towns to man the blacksmith shed in order to keep everything fine-tuned and running very well. Dr. Schneck told the new arrivals to the forestry school to find yourself a place to stay. And many did so in cabins left by settlers after Vanderbilt purchased their land. Students would give their cabins different names such as a Nat Holla, Rest of the Wicked. And as this cabin was to be known as Hell Hole. In days before paved roads, the main road between Charleston and Greenville, connected by this road, was known as Draw Road. And this is exactly what the road would have looked like back in the late 1800s. Main highway. help keep the roads resurface and smooth for horse and wagon travel. A lot of times machinery like this 
horse-drawn road scrapers were used. Guilford Pinchot was uh, Vanderbilt's very first forester from 1892 to 1885, and he developed the first forest plan recommended for cutting timber for natural regeneration, planting trees, and protecting the forest from fire and free roaming cattle. And as with every school or university, there's normally a place for the students to come and wash their clothes. And indeed so, at the cradle of forestry school, they did right here. An old wash pot would boil their clothes in water and use octagon soap to wash them out. In 1971, a former smoke jumper, Stuart Rosa, became an astronaut. And in 1971, he circled the moon. With him, he had 500 seeds. And one of those 500 seeds was planted and became this tree. Now, how neat is that? It's known as the moon tree. And it was planted as part of the bicentennial celebration in 1976. Instead of hauling the logs out of the forest, a lot of times these portable steam engines would be hauled in and a sawmill set up in order to saw boards to be hauled out by wagons, which would be a lot easier. Of course, a wood-fired steam engine would uh, turn these wheels with belts fastened to them that would turn a saw. The log would go right in here and run across here and this would slide back and forth and saw the logs. Actually the logs would go in, the firewood would go in here to fire the steam engine. In order to get the logs and lumber out of the mountains, a railroad had to be built. And that's what George Vanderbilt was popular for, was building railroads, because he actually built a railroad to construct his Biltmore House mansion. This is a Climax steam engine. It was actually owned by a paper company. It wasn't the actual engine that was used here at the School of Forestry. But yeah, they did have one indeed. And I'm sure everybody knows Carolina Tony loves a train. And here is a log car used to haul the logs out of the mountains. Railroads made it possible to haul the logs out of the mountains but it was very difficult to do without another piece of equipment. The log loader, steam powered crane with a cable attached that would be used to pull the logs up through the mountains to be loaded onto the trains. And of course, just imagine the manpower it took to build railroads through these mountains, between mountains and over creeks and rivers and streams and through mountains. Railroad trestle made with just old logs. I doubt very seriously it passed code today. Then down Biltmore Avenue to the plaza in Biltmore. He then opened the keg, set it up, and offered a drink to all passersby. The local policemen saw a crowd gathering and came to investigate. 
whereupon the student lassoed inside the lawman until the beer was consumed. The anatomic dog. Oh, this is on my must-do list. Well, that was kind of cool. There's some foresters. She's trying to catch her butterfly. That if I search long and hard enough, I would find one of these. Moonshine still. Okay, I'm going to close for now. I want to thank you for joining me on our adventure to the Cradle of Forestry here in the Pisgah National Forest. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me and follow me on my adventures. And for now, y'all have a good day.